show you here. <laughs> Can we call down there? Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Wednesday, October 26, 2016. At this time, we like to invite you all to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, while we're all standing, I would like to request a moment of silence for the late Shirley Brown. Mrs. Brown was born in Dayton and has lived in the area for uh, just about all of her life. She passed away during the week. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have a um, little added attraction here. <laughs> we have a presentation of an award from co-op president, Mr. Bill Corbett. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Would you like to come up to the podium? I would love to. Thank you. And uh, before I start, I'd like to introduce our facility manager, David Wilding, who's here with me tonight as well. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. And let me say uh, that this has been a far too long time coming. I have been with, our, with the agency for 28 years, and we have had the pleasure of meeting with several of your committees, the building inspector, Dave, I know I'm gonna, your police department, fire department, your first responders have done us a great service, and I'm embarrassed to say that this is the first time that I've come before the Board of Selectmen. Well, the, so, best, the best is always last. There you go. <laughs> so, shame on me and thank you for that. <laughs> And um, this seems awfully formal, but um, we gave this award to you folks and realized that you couldn't make it. You had a meeting, um, but I'd like to read the remarks that, that were read at, at, the, at our annual meeting and, and do it here tonight for you and present you with this plaque. Thank you. By the way, you're number 41. <laughs> I'm number 41? We have been... Uh, when somebody appears at the podium for the first time, mm -hmm. so if you come back again, it doesn't count. Oh, okay. You're number 41. Gotcha. So they're actually, you're the 41st person that has spoken at that podium. That was made by students at Bristol Plymouth. And if you come around the other side, you can see the town seal. Uh, but that was... Uh, the students made that. And Bristol Did Plymouth has done us a great service as well over the years. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful yes. job, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. How long you had it? Uh, 40 people ago. Oh, 40 people? <laughs> uh, it, it actually came in, uh, what's it, I'm going to say April? I was going to say mm -hmm. March or April, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, a bit formal, but if you'll allow me. On behalf of our entire organization, I would like to recognize the town of Dighton, not only for its commitment to community inclusion for people with disabilities, 
but also for its long-standing support of co-op. We have proudly called Dighton our corporate home since 1976, and during that time, the agency and the people we serve have developed many important relationships in this unique and very supportive community. In addition to being welcomed as neighbors, we have benefited greatly from the services of Dighton's caring and professional first responders. And we had the same positive experiences with every other department and committee that we've had the pleasure to meet with. Uh, thank you to the town of Dighton and its citizens for being such an important part of our work. You truly are a part of us, and, and thank you. It's been a great run for us, and I hope, uh, I hope you feel the same way. And the plaque, it's a community award. We give them out annually. Not to too many people, very select group, I might <laughs> add. And it reads, Community Award presented to the Town of Dighton for contributions to community services and social inclusion for people with disabilities, October 12th, 2016. Wow. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This uh, is... Oh, geez. Okay. You put that in. <laughs> the voice is great. <laughs> Maybe, maybe if the camera can pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> now, shouldn't I see your face as well? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We'll let you get back to the business at hand, and thanks for inviting me. Thank yes. you is very Russ, much for coming. Is Russ Latham still on your He's board? The boundaries, yes. He's, well, still there. There. He's still there. Yes, he is yes. still there. Yes, he is still there. I worked with Russ at DR. He's been, uh, yeah, Russ has been there for 40 some odd years, ever since, ever since he started. I'll see him uh, next week. I'll tell him you said. Tell him Nancy asked. said hello. I absolutely have to. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And be sure to extend uh, all the folks that we work with, if you start to know, we, we appreciate it as well. We will. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Our approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the minutes of the regular meeting of October the 5th and the minutes of the special meeting of September 21st, 2016 be approved. Thank you. I have a motion. And a second. And a second. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. When we're done signing these, now that the camera's on us, can we show that beautiful plaque? Sure. Go ahead, Brent. If you don't mind. Not at all. I'll do my best, Dana White. I can't choose. There, oh, there we are. No, you got to tilt it a little tilt so the light back. will get it. Tilt it back, maybe? Yeah, tilt it back a little more, however you're doing it, so because the light's not hitting it right. Oh, oh, you almost had it. Come forward just a little bit and it'll start to lighten. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. There we go. Oh, oh that's good. Beautiful. That's great. Beautiful award. Thank you so much, cable community. Got to find an appropriate place to put it now. Absolutely. I feel like Zorro when I sign these yeah, things. It sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, we'll approve the warrants. Mr. Chairman, I move that warranting 17A-17 in the amount of $83,686.59 payroll. Warrant 17B-17 in the amount of $17,975.04. Warrant 17C-17 in the amount of $57,734.47, and warrant 17D-17 in the amount of $1,430.09, the last three being all accounts payable. 
dated October 26, be approved. Seconded. Again, I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Correspondence. First piece of correspondence tonight is from the Center for Disease Control regarding the Zika virus infection update. And since this is not our regular Board of Health meeting, I'll ask the Chairman of the Board of Health, uh, Mrs. Goulart, to update us on the Zika virus. Uh, this advisory came in from the Mass Department of Public Health, but it is actually an official CDC health advisory. Um, it goes on for several pages. Uh, if anyone's interested in actually seeing the entire thing, it'll be available at Town Hall. But in short, what it's saying is that uh, pregnant women should avoid the area of Florida that is, uh, I'll say the boundaries are Miami and Dade County. These are the areas uh, that the uh, virus has turned up in, in mosquitoes. Uh, and so this is really, uh, it's a warning uh, to stay out of that area. And um, uh, this is for women who are pregnant. And if you're planning a family, it would be advisable also to stay out of this part of Florida. And again, it's Miami, Dade County, and this will be available if you want to check it out in detail. Thank you, Nancy. Next piece of correspondence is a letter from the Charmet Yacht Club. This is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a little piece of correspondence uh, in anticipation of an article of warrant on tomorrow's uh, special town meeting. It's addressed to the Board of Selectmen. This letter is intended as a strong endorsement of Harbor Master Ron Marino's efforts to acquire a 21-foot Boston Whaler Justice for the purposes of patrolling the Taunton River. There is growing activity on the Taunton River as more local residents take advantage of this beautiful regional asset. We have seen our membership grow at the Charmette Yacht Club. We have also witnessed increased traffic at the boat landing on Pleasant Street, just up river from our club. It seems that every year there are more and more boats traveling the river from the Titan Yacht Club and from Shaw's Boatyard. Furthermore, we recognize that with the projected construction of a larger boat ramp by the Department of Marine Fisheries, the volume of traffic on the river will only increase. Therefore, we believe that it's important that there be a well-equipped supervision of the activities on the water for the safety of all boaters. We at the Charmette Yacht Club hope that you'll give Harbor Master Marino's request serious consideration tomorrow night. Our fleet captain, Floyd Harper, who supervises our slips and docks, and our Commodore, Brand Cedrone, a resident of Dighton, strongly endorse Harbor Master Marino's request for an upgrade in patrol craft so he may perform his job. And it's signed Herb Hamilton, Secretary of the Charlotte Yacht Club. And this is in regards to an article that's on tomorrow night's uh, warrant at a special town meeting for uh, the Harbor Master Department to upgrade to a better and more efficient boat. The one we have is uh, getting a little worn and it's getting a little tired and like the letter states that with the increase on river traffic, uh, we do have a need to have a more economical and a more dependable boat out there patrolling at, at various times. So again, tomorrow night, special town meeting. Hope you all come out and, and support the purchase of, a, of a, another boat. Last piece of correspondence is from Serpent a newsletter article regarding complete streets funding. Uh, this uh, newsletter announced that Dighton has been awarded $38,000 in grant money 
and the grant money will actually go to SERPID to develop a complete streets prioritization plan. At the annual town meeting, uh, I made a motion uh, and you voted to allow the town to accept up to $450,000 $50,000 for planning and $400,000 for the actual projects. So this is the first step. So the maximum you could get for planning was $50,000. Dighton has been awarded $38,000. So um, SERPED will be doing this work. And once that work is completed, it will make the town eligible for up to $400,000 in capital improvement funds through the Complete Streets program at the uh, state level. And just to give you a brief, brief definition, a complete street is one that provides safe and accessible options for all travel modes, walking, biking, transit, and vehicles for people of all ages and abilities. So uh, we'll keep you advised as this project moves along. But uh, we're very happy with this because this is the the first step, the first hurdle, and we got 38,000 out of a possible 50, so that's very good. Excellent, excellent. Mr. Chairman, before we move on, can I just make a remark about this? Absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to uh, publicly thank Selectman Goulart and Selectman Cronin um, for really taking the reins on this. I think it's something that's good for the town. Um, I think it's something that's good for public safety, for everyone, um, and uh, my hat goes off to you both for really spearheading this and uh, you know pursuing it um, with your full passion. Thank you. And, and I would just add, add to that, that uh, you're welcome, Brett, but I certainly want to recognize Highway Superintendent John Ferry mm -hmm. because uh, obviously he's instrumental in this. And uh, like everything else, when we ask Tom for something, he's right there. So he has been involved with this. The paperwork was finalized. Mm -hmm. So that has helped get us to where we are right now. Next on the agenda, tonight's announcements. Tonight we have the following announcements. Trash bags, shops, disposal containers, and recycling stickers are all for sale at the Board of Selectmen's office. Call 508-669-6431 for more information. There is a prescription drug drop box located at the Dighton Police Station. It is limited to pill form prescriptions only. You may contact the Dighton Police Station at 508-669-6711 for more information. If you need fuel assistance this winter, please call Citizens for Citizens at 1 Taunton Green, Taunton Mass at 508-823-6346. Again, that's for anyone that, who feels that they may need or have uh, a little demand for fuel assistance. The number is 508-823-6346. There is a winter parking ban in effect from November 1st through April 1st of each year. No parking is allowed on any street during this time. The, the police department is currently reminding residents far in advance of any inclement weather that this ban will be enforced. The Dighton Veterans Services, in conjunction with the Dighton Lions Club and Alice's Last Stop, will be sponsoring a free veterans breakfast on Friday, November 11th, 2016, from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. at prime time, which is located right behind Town Hall, right up the roadway. You can call 508-669-6431 to let us know if you would like to come. Walk-ins are also welcome. Again, that's a breakfast, for, uh, a free veterans breakfast, Friday, November 11th, 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. <clears throat> Early voting is still going on daily and will go last through November 3rd, 2016. <clears throat> You may vote Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Wednesdays, the polls are open 7.30 a.m. until 8 p.m. 
The Dighton Lions Arts Festival will be held on November 6, 2016 at Arujo Farms, beginning at 10 a.m. One other announcement, Mr. Chair. One other announcement. Um, since we, we talked about the, uh, the Yacht Club supporting the boat for Mr. Uh, Marino, um, at the town meeting tomorrow night. This poster, that's a collage really. Uh, let's see, I probably should turn it this way. Mm -hmm. um, this is a series of pictures of the Old Town Hall, also known as the Grange Hall. This will be in the hall outside when you come in to uh, check in to vote. So take a look at this. You can see exactly what the hall looks like right now inside and out. And there is an article on the warrant uh, for $125,000 to convert the lower level to office space. But this will be there, so I just want to mention, look for this when you come into the Dighton Middle School tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Old business. No old business. No old business. We always wrap up all our business. No business. First on the agenda, review, discuss, and act on a petition from Verizon to relocate poll number 44 on Elm Street. Three copies, Mr. Chairman. Three copies. Wow. Um, I'll entertain a motion to... Um, Approve a petition from Verizon to relocate poll number 44 on Elm Street. So moved. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. It looks like this uh, poll is going to be moved three foot. So you need to cut down a tree for paperwork to move it three feet. <laughs> With that being said, any other discussion? Uh, the only thing I would mention is that uh, Verizon has been excellent. Uh, I was contacted by uh, Mr. Ferry, the highway superintendent, about Pole 54 on Horton Street that was leaning uh, badly into Horton Street, and it was a double pole. Uh, and I contacted uh, Verizon, and in less than 24 hours, that, that hazard was removed. And then a week or so back, a resident stopped in uh, and talked about a poll uh, in the area of Wellington and William Street. And this poll had some kind of a box on it that was an obstruction. And uh, I called Verizon. That one was removed that very day. So I want to say, uh, I want to uh, publicly thank Verizon for the quick response uh, in the instance of these two polls. <coughs> If only they'd expand Fios in Dighton. <laughs> Please, Verizon, if you're watching. <laughs> Rick has more signatures on that than we do. <laughs> Oh, this is near the solar farm. Yep. Propose. So. <clears throat> Not true. That's Brett. While we're signing this, I just wanted to uh, thank the clerk's office um, for a smooth early voting, uh, first time ever in Massachusetts. Um, I voted early. It was extremely, extremely easy. Um, it was an efficient setup downstairs here at Town Hall, um, and it was an efficient process. Um, I cast my ballot, I stuffed it back in the envelope, wrote my name and address on the outside of the envelope, and gave it back to the checker to be checked out. Um, so if you don't feel like waiting in lines uh, on Tuesday, November 8th, um, please come in early vote. It's a great system. And just to add, add to that, uh, our town clerk, Susanna Medeiros, had stopped by the office the night before she went home 
and she is very, very um, glad for the amount of people who have participated in the first ever early voting. Um, I had just heard on the news that there were 33 states across the nation that are taking advantage of this early voting. Uh, it has been very positive feedback from all the news stations on their correspondence from the states. As far as uh, the town of Dighton, this is the third day of early voting. And we, we, we're already close to almost 400 people that have, have voted. Wow. So it's, a, it's a one heck of a start. You have tomorrow, and then you have the four days next week also. So take advantage of it. Come out. It's a very uh, lax uh, atmosphere down there. And um, if you have questions, feel free to ask anyone that's down there. When you think about the number of people that have already voted three days ago. Mm -hmm. And they're predicting a record turnout. So if you can vote early, folks, uh, I think we will have long lines on Election Day. And uh, the weather has cooperated the past few days. And uh, I was down there uh, part of the time. And it is truly um, very simple, no lines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just such a relaxed and pleasant atmosphere. The people get a chance to chat with the poll workers, mm -hmm. something that doesn't happen too often because there are so many people you have to keep moving. But uh, if you have a chance, stop in and, and take care of this early. I, did, I just wanted to add, I, I totally agree with you, Selectman Goulart. Uh, I voted early in Texas in 2012 when I was still living there. And um, it was a chaotic <laughs> system. I mean, we were in a big city, so that comes with the territory. but. Um, I just really appreciated how efficient it was, and I think uh, the clerk's office really just uh, did a great job with it. So, thank you. And this, I'll add one more thing. Um, our town clerk had also conveyed a little story to me that the turnout for early voting around the whole area has been so tremendous that she received a call late this afternoon from the town clerk of Mansfield. It seems that, like Selectman Sograffis mentioned, that after you, you fill in your ballot, you put it in an envelope. Well, the town of Mansfield has already run out of all their envelopes. Wow. <laughs> Which means people that show up to vote tonight or tomorrow cannot vote mm -hmm. because they must be placed in this special printed envelope. So this town clerk in Mansfield was calling around seeing if she could rummage some <laughs> some envelopes from other towns. Um, our town clerk, who's always willing to help, uh, has an idea of, of the first three days of where she stands, but she received, whether it was by mistake or coincidental or what, a double order of envelopes. She goes, I happen to have a few extra. So they were sending somebody right over us to keep the early voting going in Mansfield tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it has been a, a tremendous uh, outcome, and, and people uh, seem like to be content with it. Mm -hmm. uh, next on the agenda, review, discuss, and act for a food permit for Zuber Farm. This is a permit for an establishment named, or a company named Zuba Farm, who will be having an event at Bristol County Agricultural High School's fall show, which I believe is this weekend or next yes. week? Yes, this weekend. This weekend. Um, this is a, um, a beef company who um, raises hybrid beef stock that uh, packages and freezes uh, meat that which will be sold uh, at the fall show this coming weekend. So if anybody interested, you know, and, and you're going through some of the vendors that are there, take a look at uh, what this product is and it's supposed to be all great fed beef stock and, and um, I don't know a lot about it, but uh, it, it comes with high ratings and we wish them luck on their first uh, showing at the Bristol County Agricultural Hall Show. 
If we weren't at that conference, Nancy, excuse me, select and go live, that's where I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so you might get a, oh, okay. you might get a little time. Yeah, Friday. Uh, this, this permit came up at the Board of Health meeting last week, and uh, Inspector Bernardo asked that we delay acting on it so that he would have an opportunity to find out where the uh, the animals are grown, uh, raised in Dartmouth, but he wanted to check into where the uh, animals uh, are actually rendered. So I see we have information here uh, about this, so. That's quite a menu you can buy. Any kind of beef which is finished with non-GMO corn, no hormones or antibiotics used. And this is a fifth generation local farm, so. USDA wow. certified beef. Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, as uh, Mrs. Goulart has, has stated, this is, uh, all this cattle is, is raised in Dartmouth, Mass. How much is ribeye? Ribeye, it's 1250 a pound. 1250 a pound. Wow. Yeah, that, that's about right. Mm -hmm. I'll be making a pit stop there. They even have eggs. Friday. <laughs> I think he's sell eggs, too. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve the and sign the food permit for Zuba Farms. And I second that, Mr. Chairman. Motion to remain seconded. Any other discussion? There are none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda, new business, review, discuss, and act on a waiver of workman's compensation for Kevin Raposa. Again, as I mentioned, the last couple uh, selectmen's meetings, this is at a time of year that Superintendent Ferry of the Highway Department starts to, to load up on his, uh, his help for the winter season for plowing. Uh, some of these uh, vendors and contractors have their own trucks that they use. And, and on the other side of the coin, there's uh, more drivers that, that Superintendent Ferry has to put on. These waivers are usually for people who are, are in business for themselves, they don't have any help, and they ask that the town waive a workman's compensation insurance because they are sole proprietors and they actually don't need it. So by this letter, the Board of Selectmen at their regular meeting voted to approve the request of Kevin Raposa to waive the workman's compens compensation for the plow season 2016-2017. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I will second that, Mr. Chairman. A motion's been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? We need someone to plow. That's right, that's <laughs> right. If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, that motion carries unanimously. Next, we'll review, discuss, and act on another waiver of workman's compensation for Sam Pine, Jr. Again, this is a request from Sam Pine, Jr. that the uh, Board of Selectmen approve a request for a workman's compensation waiver for the plow season 2016-2017. Uh, Sam's been doing this for many years, does a fantastic job. Uh, and I'll entertain a motion to waive the workman's comp uh, insurance. So moved. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda, review, discuss, and act on a request from Bases Covered to hold the second annual Bases Covered 5K Road Race on Sunday, May 7th, 2017. Brett, would you like to? Uh, absolutely. I don't want to leave you out. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's dated October 15th, 2016, to the Board of Selectmen here at Town Hall. At the request of Allison Tessier and the Bases Covered program, we would like to hold the second annual Bases Covered 5K Road Race on Sunday, May 7, 2017. The race would again begin at the end of G-Lopes Baseball 
and softball complex on Maple Swamp Road beginning at 9 a.m. So it will begin and end at the complex. The Basis Covered program helps raise funds for residents of Dighton that are struggling with medical bills due to illness. Race day setup would begin at approximately 7 a.m., which would involve us placing some course directional arrows and mile markers along the route. Race day registration and bib pickup would start at 8 a.m. with a 9 a.m. race start with everyone off the roads and course cleaned up by 11 a.m. Police detail will be hired and placed according to the recommendation of the Dighton Police Department. Attached, please find a copy of the proposed course map. Thank you. Anne Marie Winchester. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the request for the uh, basis covered 5K road race on May 7th, 7, 2017. And I am happy to second that, Mr. Chairman. Again, I have a motion and a second. Do we have uh, any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Moving right along, do we have any reports tonight? I don't have anything. That's a report in and of itself. We have nothing to report. Very good. <laughs> Rolling right along. <laughs> Rolling right along to acknowledgments. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge an anonymous donation to prime time in the amount of $30. Again, this comes from uh, Sheila New, Assistant Program Manager, Dighton Council on Asian, Prime Time Supportive Day Program. We are pleased to inform you that Prime Time has received a donation in the amount of $30. As usual, all donations are turned over to the town accountant and deposited in the Prime Time Gift and Donations account. Should you have any questions or need additional information, please do not hesitate to call. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, acknowledge the anonymous donation, $30 to prime time. I second that, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. I don't see that we have public input. You don't want to wait a couple hours? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, Someone will show up. <laughs> anything that my colleagues would like to add before we adjourn? I'd like to remind everyone, don't forget tomorrow night, 7 p.m. at the Dighton Middle School, the special town meeting. Uh, we hope that a good contingency of our uh, registered voters turn out. We do have some um, very interesting articles. Again, we'll be asked to be voting on an article to uh, approve an added amount to the police station uh, project. Uh, we have a, war a warrant article for a new upgraded boat to patrol the Taunton, uh, Taunton River. We have a, another article asking the people to approve the money to improve the condition of the old uh, Dighton Town Hall which most of us know is the Grange Hall, to renovate the low level into much needed office space. And just to throw a pitch out for, the, for that renovation, that is a much needed uh, project that will enhance not only the operation and the uh, better working conditions within our own town hall, but we can, we'll be providing a somewhat called annex to our town hall next door, which will have departments, four different departments stationed there, which is uh, very closely related to a one shop, one stop shopping area, that the four departments that will be over there all feed off one another. So whether it be need of a variance or going to a planner board to have a plan or a lot approved or getting a building permit, they're all going to be in one location. So you can do but and veterans. and veterans services at the lower level, easy entrance and exit for, for our fellow veterans. Um, with that said, if there's nothing else, uh, we hope you all do come to the special town meeting tomorrow night. Um, 
It's very important. This is this is money that you must approve to be spent, allocated, transferred, um, put in the direction of, of where this board thinks it needs to be uh, put and um, distributed to. So I hope to see you all there. Again, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Dighton Middle School. Uh, Do you want to say anything about the department organization here? Oh, I know. Um, in addition to the articles that Mr. Cronin uh -huh. mentioned, we are looking to, um, we are looking for your approval to purchase a new chipper and a front end loader for the highway department. And with winter coming, uh, it's our understanding that that front end loader is a priority piece of equipment. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and what people have said, well, that's a kind of expensive piece of machinery. Yes, it is uh, a very expensive piece of machinery. However, if the snows come, and as often as they came last year, and that front end loader that has had more band-aids put on than Johnson & Johnson can manufacture, um, if that should go down, even our police department and our fire department come to a halt because they're not going to be able to travel the streets of Dighton in any emergency uh, without them being cleared and without that front end loader filling the, all our plow trucks with the sand and the salt it, it's very much needed. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Ferry has felt has probably held off approximately five to four to five more years than he should have before he, he actually came to the board and said, can I, you know, put in an article to, to buy a new one? Uh, it's a much needed piece of equipment. So uh, come out please and support the needs of the town. Uh, it's, it's well deserved and it's well needed, trust me. I just wanted to add one thing. Um, not speaking um, as a selectman on this uh, board, but just speaking as a resident, um, I'm proud of the warrant. I think it is a warrant um, that has a vision for the future. It's not a warrant that's putting band-aids on things. It's a warrant that quite frankly is solving um, and addressing a lot of the issues that we've had in town. Um, so I urge you all to come out and I just wanted to thank um, the various department heads, department heads for planning for that future. So thank you. Uh, as far as the relocation of the four departments that Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Cronin mentioned, uh, we haven't uh, settled everything here in town hall, but obviously uh, the plan is to have a town administrator on board uh, right after the January holiday, and that person will be located on the first floor. Uh, when you think about the layout for the town clerk, treasurer, collector, uh, there is a plan to move the town accountant, not sure where in the building yet, but the plan is to free up the town accountant's office space because there's a direct hall connection between that office and treasurer, collector, clerk. And this will alleviate some of the crowding where we have five people in this office next door that was actually built for two people. So that'll give us some additional space. And uh, so what we have to do is um, allocate space. We'll, we, we will have space in this building for the Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, and the town accountant. But it'll all work out. Uh, but there will be some changes in this building but it will be to facilitate service to the community so that when you come in, treasurer, collector, clerk is all going to be on the east side of the building, uh, maybe uh, one of the offices further down the hall, but you'll still go to the same area to conduct any business with those departments. And the administrator, as I said, will be on the first floor, and that would be also another office that you'd be visiting when you come in. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. And the last thing I'd like to say about tomorrow's uh, uh, special town meeting, a special thanks go out to those who presented their articles. Special thanks go out to those that submitted articles that this board did not think was appropriate or a priority at this time that were very um, conducive to holding off to a future town meeting to resubmit their articles. 
And lastly, I'd like to thank our administrative assistant for preparing the warrant from start to finish. Um, it's really the first warrant that she's done from start to finish, taking all the suggestions and the written draft uh, articles from all the department heads and various committee members. And uh, I'd like to thank her for her due diligence and a great job. Thank you. Uh, the Finance Committee will be having a brief meeting before the special town meeting. I'm not sure what room it will be in, but uh, we used to meet at 6.30 prior to town meeting. So sometime 6.30 or thereafter, before 7 o'clock, the Finance Committee will be meeting because there were a couple of articles that they hadn't formulated their recommendations on, and they will make them at the town meeting. Uh, but three members of the Finance Committee did have the opportunity to tour the old town hall, so they, they see uh, what the plans are, and uh, I believe there'll be a positive recommendation on that project from the Finance Committee. Very good. Anything else? I oh, forgot to thank um, Mr. Aguiar for helping us, um, you know, kind of determine uh, mm -hmm. what the most efficient um, layout would be and all that. So thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Very nice, very nice. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. I'd like to thank Cable, as usual, for their fine production. Um, I'd like to thank all the people out there who continually tune in and, and watch this Board of Selectmen's meeting on Wednesday nights. And my last uh, plea is please come out and vote, uh, not vote, but participate in the spending of some much needed uh, free cash and money at tomorrow's special town meeting. Uh, I assure you that everything on that warrant is, is a priority for the different departments in this town. There is no f uh, uh, decorative uh, thing, articles being purchased. These are all needed and prioritized. And, uh, and like uh, my fellow selectman has already mentioned, this is a, a very good warrant, one that this board supports wholeheartedly. And I'm sure the Finance Committee will be tuning in on the same um, recommendations that we do. Again, please come out tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Dighton Middle School. And good night, everybody. One more thing. Halloween will occur before we meet again. Uh, let's hope everybody has a safe Halloween. I hope the weather is good. Uh, small children out there, I'm sure, will be accompanied by parents. So everybody, enjoy Halloween and be safe. Happy Halloween. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, Cable. Thank you.